A great challenge from Sergio Perez to come home and finish second. Jacob Peter speaking. Absolutely great and fantastic race. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, yes! Thank you, everybody, thank you. Hey, you are the man, thank you. Great effort for everybody. Unbelievable. I was just a bit angry that I didn't win, but uh, all in all, I'm very happy, very proud of my team. Very thankful for all the people who have supported me. I'm just looking forward for, for my future. I think it's going to be a great year. This was my second year in Formula One and the second race of the season in 2012. I was racing with Sauber, a relatively small team. And it was yeah, my second year. I was pretty excited, pretty new to the sport. And then we faced ourselves as a team, as a driver, into, into a unique position where we could win the race, you know. Very tricky conditions, and the rain fall over massively and, and we took the right decisions. And then towards the end, we were in a good shot of winning the race. Perez, six tenths up again in this first sector. Brilliant, surely. The Mexican national anthem being played at the end of this Grand Prix. Got to be a possibility now. First, the sound of the engines were great uh, back in 2012. And then I'm chasing Fernando. There's only one racing line from what I remember. You can see that it's drying up, but offline is pretty damp. Two tenths of a second, the difference between Alonso and Perez through that first sector. We have some new heroes in Formula One. Sergio Perez driving a tremendous Grand Prix. And I'm pretty close to, to Fernando there with a good shot of winning. But at the time, I think as a team, we were thinking more about the podium than, than going for the win, you know? We were so close. It was going to be very risky to, to overtake Fernando, uh, given that it was only one, one racing line. Alonso is on one lap older option than you. Alonso is on option, they fit him one lap before you. Amazing, isn't it? That the harder compound tyre, which normally is the slower tyre, today proving beneficial to Sergio Perez as though through turn seven and eight they go. He's, he's going to catch him before they get to the, uh, the hairpin. He might not need DRS for this one. Under braking, Alonso in the lead. Less than a car's length under braking to Sergio Perez in second place. Perez never won a Grand Prix before. Fernando Alonso's won 27 of them. But yeah, I remember at the time, instead of going for it, my team were also quite concerned of it, you know, like uh, they were thinking, OK, let's uh, guarantee the podium rather than going for the win. It came really, really close. He's got so much more confidence on the brakes everywhere. I think I liked some experience, some racing experience to make sure I could beat Fernando. Fernando did a fantastic race uh, because I was quite a bit faster than him. Uh, on that day, but I am not go getting close enough to overtake him on the straight. I, I needed to really overtake him on the straight and not into the corner because there is no room for braking. And yeah, at that point we are all thinking like, okay, let's let's make sure we. I'm thinking I'm going for the win, but then on the other hand, my team is telling me to to make sure I bring the car home on those tricky conditions. We are with the slicks, but track is drying up, but it's not totally dry. Jacob, be careful, we need this position, we need this position. Ooh. Possible light rain, corner one, two, three. Possible light rain, one, two, three. So you stay out in any case. Do you want to be telling your driver oh, that? No, no, go for gold. What they're saying is, hey, let's take the points, take the 18 points. Well, they're not saying that, they're saying, don't risk 18, but try and get 25 if you can. So it's like two different scenarios, but definitely I lost a bit of uh, concentration, I'll say, into these conditions and yeah, I mean, I was getting really, really close, uh, as you can see. I've never seen this onboard actually from, from Fernando, from Fernando's car. Couple more laps into it, probably I could have uh, put him into more pressure, but then I, I lost it going into, into that turn in Malaysia. What's happened? He's, he's gone wide. Yes, he has. He's gone wide down at turn 14, lost him a heap of time. Not the corner that Salva was saying to be careful at and there might be a touch of light rain, but very near to it. But Sergio Perez should have been coming around this hairpin in a position to attack Fernando Alonso. And he is but five seconds clear now, Alonso, down that main straight. 
just what happened to Sergio Perez there. I ran wide a little bit into the curve. I went off and it just made things a, a, a bit more nervous for my team at the time where they were making sure that I, that I got the result home. And then I just kept pushing to make sure that I, I am in, in a position to keep the pressure on onto Fernando. Sergio Perez, he's still lapping half a second quicker than Fernando Alonso. I really do think what could have been had he not run wide there. I think there yeah, probably could have been a victory. The only thing I lacked there was a bit more racing experience in, in Formula One. Alonso wins in Malaysia. A great challenge from Sergio Perez to come home and finish second. Jaco Peter speaking. Absolutely great and fantastic race. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, yes! Thank you, everybody, thank you. Hey, you are the man, thank you. Great effort for everybody. That was my first ever podium in, in the sport. My team wasn't used to be in that situation at the time, you know, it was all like, already a second place was a fantastic result for us, but we were really within the shot of winning the, the Grand Prix. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go.